Hey everybody, it's Dogger13R, coming at you with another episode. Today I'm going to play in the Can-J Panzer. I got it in a, a group of gold tanks that I bought. I wanted to uh, flush out the German garage a little bit more. It was back in March Madness, and I realized that there was a big gap in Tier 7 and 8 in my German garage. So I really wanted Tiger 131, and it was a part of the package, so I got that. And if you're a fan of the channel, you've seen it before. And uh, so I thought I'd showcase some of the rest of the tanks in there so that you can see if you were looking at that kind of thing. If it's still available or not, I don't know. So uh, here's the Can-J Panzer for today. Pardon me, coming through. And it's a big old Winnebago. Now, Stalker 13R doesn't often play these traditional uh, turretless tank destroyers, but uh, you know I didn't like anything else in the German uh, Tier 8 line, so I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a try. We'll see how the other half lives. So I'll come up here to the traditional camping spot for these TDs, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, now this is an encounter game, and as you know, Stalker's rule is always be within 30 to 45 seconds of that cap. So we're going to be in a position where we can overwatch that cap and we can affect what's going on. Uh, we can also get some shots on some guys that will show up down here as far from the cap as possible. Because uh, why wouldn't you go there? And we'll get some spotting in too, because this will be a great spot for that. So the first few minutes have just been pretty much sitting around waiting, and we're going to try to stay positive today. Uh, we got plenty of folks up here on the hill. And uh, I'm a little concerned about this guy being right behind me, because uh, if I have to back out, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. But later on, we'll see that he adjusts his position, and this player actually was was being mindful of that and was uh, doing the right thing. So we're going to get the gun heated up and we're going to start lobbing those rounds in. You know, if they were smart, they'd just blind fire up here, but they don't seem to be concerned with us at all. They seem to be trying to take out that spotter. And if, you know, if they just blind fired up here into the bush, then uh, we'd all have to back out of the way and then they could deal with the spotter. So. You know, it's not always that spotter that's right in front of you that's your biggest threat. Go ahead and blind fire from that overwatch position. So I'll take a look here and uh, I'll show you. Since he came up behind me at an angle like this, if I had to back out at an angle, I could do a quick turn and back right out. So he's not blocking me in. If you ever sit right behind someone to where they can't back out, that's the wrong move. Don't do that. But uh, this player here, he's playing really tight. Uh, he is using me for cover, but you know what? He's uh, doing it in a way that won't affect my play, and we can all get our guns going, so that's that's great. So, uh, we've got this situation down here in the south uh, pretty well in hand. They're moving forward there, and that's going to pretty much end what we're able to do on that flank. And you can see the Tiger P realizes that, and he's going to move out. I'll see if I can catch a piece of that, but that TD's on the back side of that hill. So now, this is where, you know, playing that traditional TD role, you know, I find that um, I feel like it's about a third of the game I'm actually doing something, and the other two-thirds of the game I'm just hanging out in my camping spot waiting for something to happen, and I'm not really getting that DPM uh, in contribution to the team. So I am in a position, like I mentioned, where I can overwatch the cap and I can get a few shots into the background back there so long as somebody spots for me. I think I bounced that shot. And we'll go into sniper mode here pretty quick so that you'll see how thin some of those are, but there are shots back up in that upper right hand corner that I can get from here. And I'm overwatching the cap while we wait to see uh, just what's going to be going on down there. So it's 4-2 right now. You know, there's no real pressure to uh, to get get heavily involved in this game. I'm a little worried about what's going on in the north because, you know, if we've won the south, you know, traditionally that means that the north isn't going as well. But uh, taking a look at the map there, there was four people actually up there versus four tanks up there. I'm still in a position where I can uh, shoot at those tanks that are coming from the backfield. And we saw one heavy tank that was working its way around the corner up there. So he should be coming up here in any minute. So to reposition, by the time I got over there, the situation would be different than it is right now. And I'm still in a position to overwatch that cap. 
So eventually they're going to have to move down there. And it's still 5-2. So we'll go ahead and get into sniper mode here. You can see I just missed a shot on that guy. I can't quite get around the corner here. But we'll get some more. So we'll take a look at the side of this giant Winnebago. Now this thing has like 30 millimeters of armor. It is absolutely nothing. Anything will penetrate you. And it doesn't have a very large health pool. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not my play style, so I don't want to sound like I'm being completely negative, but to know what you're getting into, its mobility isn't bad. It's a little wonky like the TDs are. Uh, it's got no armor, no armor whatsoever. Uh, the alpha on the gun is not that much. It has a pretty good rate of fire, but being in a position where you can... Uh, just continually shoot and shoot and shoot without having to back out and then come back in. Uh, you know, it's not something I find very often. And to be honest with you, this game was cherry picked. This is probably the best game I've ever had in this thing. And I haven't played that many, but uh, I do like to branch out and play different kinds of tanks and, you know, get a better understanding of what's going on. But uh, we'll take a peek at this uh, TD that's going to try to get over. And we'll get one in the side. And do we get another one? No, somebody else gets that kill and we're on the reload. So you can see that that reload's pretty quick there. I'm going to take a blind shot. I either bounced or went over the top, so we'll see what happens. But they should show back up here. So now I'm like, you know, do I stay here? Am I really doing the team any good? You know, there's guys already down there on the cap overwatch, and I've got to get my gun back in this game. I can't just sit in the same camping spot the whole game, and I think I can get some shots from down here, and I might be able to get farther around that corner. So there we go. We got that tiger that's coming around. And we'll give him a little something to think about. So you can see I did 194 there. That's really not a lot, you know, up here at tiers, you know, 7. Or eight. Uh, I did manage to get a couple off there, but you know, I, I'd I'd rather have you know a higher a higher alpha damage. And actually, this game's going pretty good. So, you know, this is what I would describe as an average game, except it's not average for this tank. Uh, I'm not a TD driver, and you know, I really really don't get a lot done in this tank most of the time and I end up spending about two-thirds of the game sitting around hoping that somebody will drive into my area of the map and either they do and you get some shots off or they don't and the team either wins or loses without you so I'm just gonna run right in and uh, figure this guy's got a fatherland and he's got his barrel pointed the other way and we'll come here and give him some Klaus Kellerman action and finish this game off so yeah, so whose play style would I say this tank fits? If you're a big fan of that CDC French tank that has no armor and has a pretty good rate of fire, uh, if you like that tank and think, man, I really wish I didn't have a turret and I had the wonky characteristics and driving of a, a tank destroyer, then this tank is something for you. But uh, it has no armor, you know, getting its getting its rate of fire up often enough to make up for that low alpha damage. You know, I mean, here I'm a tier 8, and you see I wasn't one of the big damage dealers, because, you know, you're just not in that position for most of the game, because you have to camp. And doing anything other than camping is just not an option in this tank. So, if you really like the CDC and want to challenge yourself even more by not having a turret at all, and put something German in the garage, then this would be for you. But everybody else, I'd probably take a pass. So I've got something else in the garage that I can put in a rotation if I have to play German for whatever event that they're having. And uh, we can get some things done just so that if I'm platooned up, you know, we're not, you know, locked into either, you know, tiers five or six or tier, you know, ten. So, so we'll see what we get going on there. And I just wanted to kind of showcase this tank today and We'll take a look at it, and I got it in a bundle. Uh, I would not buy it individually. Um, 
So if you've had a different experience and you think this is great because it does have some mobility and you can change camping spots halfway through the game, you know, put it in the comments. Let me know. You know, send me a link to whatever video that that's in. But uh, I think we'll wrap it up there for today. Here's some of the stats. You know, you can see it's 250 penetration. It's saying 240 for damage. But as you saw, you know, I'm often, you know, not getting that on that Tiger one. I was, you know, in the mid 100s. You know, that's, that's almost 100 less than what it's advertised as for damage. And that's pretty regular for what I find my performance is. Thanks for watching.